Coming up today on Locked On at Texas Tech, square pegs, round holes, round pegs, square holes, and panhandling for carries for underprivileged running backs this holiday season. Next on Locked On Texas Tech. You are Locked On Texas Tech, your daily podcast on the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're going to start this thing off right. Raider! <laughs> Great to see you again on Locked On at Texas Tech on the Locked On Podcast Network. And thanks for making us your first listen on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts. Today's episode brought to you by Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use our code locked on college for a first deposit match up to a hundred bucks at prizepicks.com slash locked on college. Daily fantasy sports made easy with the only chris level i'm casey cowan chris great to see you once again and some sound to take in here today from red raider head coach joey mcguire as well as offensive coordinator zach kitley we'll get to a big fourth down call and the mindset or thought process that went into that and also somewhat like i don't know a santa claus with the bell outside a department store carries carries for the running back is that going to be the call this holiday <laughs> season we'll get to zach kitley's thoughts on that as well coming up in just a moment but you see it there on the screen if you're watching on youtube the first bullet point says dear red raiders because once again and this is indicative of how the season is going we've had to have a call to the fan base from the head coach and a message of hang with us let's take a listen to red raider head coach joey mcguire saying just that uh, for the Red Raider fans, man, we need you. I know there's a bunch going out to Provo for uh, the BYU game, but we're going to need you on Thursday in a couple weeks against TCU. And so as frustrated as you are, and I feel your frustration and totally understand it and I can appreciate it, I've always said and I always will, um, you know, say whatever you want about me. But one thing about these, these players, they haven't given up. They're not going to give up. They're proud of, you know, being Red Raiders. And so don't give up on them. Show up. Be the Red Raiders that we know you are. And just for me, thank you for everything you're doing for these players. Call me crazy, Chris. I think I'm detecting a little emotion uh, in the coach's voice there. And uh, you want to be talking ball. So that tells you how frustrating the season is when you got to once again kind of be communicating directly with the fans. And I know he does it because he cares. Yeah, you know, and, and I, I think uh, I think he sees his kids still like nobody's checked it in. I mean, you know, nobody thought you'd be three and four uh, right now, but also nobody thought you'd be dealing with, you know, um, a potential third string quarterback. And you know, on, on and on it goes. I mean, as I walk into the building the other day, yeah, I guess it was yesterday. You know, Tyler Shuck just rolls by me on a scooter. He's like, "What's up, man?" I'm like, "Hey, man, how are?" How are you, you doing okay? He's like one day at a time. And it's just like, you know, we've already kind of moved on and that was a, a month ago or three weeks ago. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I think this is the hard part of the seat. This is where like, if you're not careful, like the grind can set in and like you go, man, do we really have anything to play for? But, and you have a very mature football team that a lot of these guys have a lot to play for because again, the old saying goes, you are what you put on tape. And so a lot of these guys, I think, are hoping to have a chance at the NFL. And, you know, I, I think that they they have not checked it in. And, you know, and, and we'll we'll see this uh, bear out uh, as the as the, the the remaining games go along. But you still have, you know, what five five regular season games to go, and you need to to win the bulk of them to get to a to get to a bowl game. Uh, but I, I think that's what, you know, J- Joey is very, I, I think there's a misnomer too, because see, like you see this nice emotional, you know, head coach in front of the microphone. I think the, the people do. And yet I think he, he will, he'll, he unleashes on his kids at times too. Uh, and, and when he's frustrated and angry with them and upset with them and all that stuff, but he just doesn't, I guess, let the public see that maybe. And um, and I think though this is just his way of saying, "Hey, man, if you if you have issues with anything over here, send them my way. I can handle it. Don't 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 poke at these kids or whatever. That they, they are working hard. They're doing their thing. But that's what a it's kind of what a players' coach in 2023. It's kind of the way the roles are set up, man. That's the way uh, that's the way it works these days. 
it's it's damned if you do, damned if you don't. Every yes. coach has their own style, and some coaches might totally disregard or just say, you know, I'm not I'm not talking to the fan base because that's not who I have to motivate. I've got to motivate the guys who are in the locker room. Some might totally ignore it. Uh, Joey McGuire has gone the route of not ignoring it and actually speaking directly to the fan base a couple of times. Again, that tells you what kind of season you're having because that's not what you want to do every Monday is show up and say, hey, stick with us. You want to show up and say, hey, how'd you like that whooping we put on them Saturday? You know, I mean, we all know what you would like to be talking about, but you haven't had the chance to talk about it as often as you hope to coming into the year. But the damned if you do, damned if you don't thing, Chris, I, I think as he shows some care there to some fans, I see from other fans, why are you not angrier? You know, somebody's out there wanting this if you're not giving them that and vice versa. If you were angry, somebody would say, look at this guy. He's too emotional. You know, what kind of leader is that going to be? So uh, take it how you want and let me know what your reaction is in the YouTube comments. But you get what I'm saying. This is his approach. Others have other approaches, but somebody's going to be frustrated with either one when you have the season that you're having, right? I mean, you're not going to satisfy everybody with something like this all the time. Well, it, it, it's funny. It's too emotional. Like in, in, in Waco right now, they're like, is Aranda awake? There's no emotion there, whatever. He's, <laughs> right, is, he, yeah. is, he, is he dead inside? Whereas <laughs> when he was winning the Big 12 championship and they, they stopped Oklahoma State on a fourth down, he was like, he never, he never flinched. But it was like cool at the Poise. time. Yeah, yeah it was like, look at that. That is unbelievable. And now all of a sudden it's like, hey man, are are you there? How do how do we turn you on? Um, yeah, and it, 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 again, it all just comes down to results. Yeah, um, exactly. It all comes down to results. Th right. These are the types of things you have to consider when you can't go straight to the win loss record to satisfy the audience. You have to think <laughs> about like, okay, what can I say? And that's his approach. Again, let us know what you think about it in the YouTube comments. I want to get to the Red Raider offensive coordinator, Zach Kitley, Chris, because I thought his portion of the press conference was as interesting as anything, because, of course, he was asked about the mindset behind some of the approaches. We spent a lot of time yesterday talking about uh, what you didn't do well defensively, and I guess we can go throughout the entire week arguing back and forth who had the worst night, which is the most painful game to play. I don't know about anybody would want to do that. So I don't mean to just shine the focus on one side or the other, but I thought Coach Kitley's answers to some of these questions were really interesting and something else I'd love to hear from the audience from as to how you interpret some of these things. Let's begin, Chris, with what was a singular play that turned out to be one heavily now reviewed under a spotlight. There, there is not a play that took the game one way or another, obviously, when you lose it 38 to 21. But for the sake of this conversation, let's go to fourth down in the third quarter, fourth down, obviously always a big talking point in each and every game where you do something that doesn't work out. We had one of these leaving the Oregon game right. If you make a block, maybe pick it up. We're not even talking about it, <laughs> but we didn't. So we were, and that's kind of the same case here. Now, you came out of the locker room down, but still within a score, obviously. I think it was 17 to 14 at the time. You'd picked up a first down already on this drive as you got the ball to start the third quarter. Then you wind up at fourth and two on your own 45-yard line. We already know what the play was. It was a deep strike down the west side line from Jake Strong. Did not connect. Didn't even get close. You kind of talked about it yesterday. Didn't even really have a receiver open. So wasn't something that looked great and obviously wasn't successful. Here is offensive coordinator Zach Kitley being asked about the thought process going into that play. First, today's episode brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. And these days, every new hire can feel like a huge gamble. And when we're talking about your business or livelihood, that's not ideal. But never fear, LinkedIn Jobs is here to help by finding the best qualified candidates available fast and for free, all on one easy to use and secure platform with simple but specific targeting tools allowing you to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to consider. They go beyond just resume data by using insights from your job post, your company, and their 870 million member profiles to put your post in front of the most qualified candidates faster than anyone else. So go to linkedin.com slash locked on college today to identify the most qualified candidates and connect with them fast and for free. Just like a bad hire could sink your ship, the right hire could take your business to new heights this year. And it's no coincidence that small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. So post your job for free today at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college. It's so easy. Even a big 12 ref could do it. That's linkedin.com slash 
Locked On College to post your job for free today with LinkedIn Jobs. Terms and conditions apply. Here is offensive coordinator Zach Kitley being asked about the thought process going into that play. It's a, kind of a split field call. We had to fade on to, to JB right there, and then we had a, a quick game concept to the left. Uh, they went cover zero on that play, um, so what wasn't really an option for the for the run on that one. And again, man, those are some scenarios where you want. That's what you want. You want a one on one scenario, and uh, we didn't win the route, and then we end up overthrowing it a little bit. So you know, looking back on it, that's one of the ones you'd like the quarterback to be a little bit more patient, see that we don't win on that route, and kind of throw more of a back shoulder because the the field concept uh, was covered up, and so he did the right thing, working the one on one. We just got to deliver on that play. And Chris, that sounds like a victory or a key to victory you gave out, right? Winning some one on one matchups and something we didn't do often enough Saturday. And, and, and I, I think um, no, I mean, I, I think it was hinted at <clears throat> yesterday uh, with with you know, I think the, even the head coach. But I, I thought your receivers just got manhandled. Uh, you know, yeah, there there was maybe some some flags that should have been thrown, some Kansas State Wildcats arriving early and all that. I also think some of your outside guys just get got it kind of pushed around. And like Jerron Bradley, if you watch it, look, okay, first of all, that's a tough call to watch. I don't know all the dynamics of, of, you know, and, and, and some would even say, Hey man, even if it's, they're loaded up, just still run it, Tr t take your chance. Cause what was it? Fourth and three. Is that right? Uh, fourth and two. Well, the fourth box and two. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You, you know, just still take your, your shot and and try to do it that way as opposed to, you know, th throwing it uh, deep down the sideline with a freshman quarterback and all that. But <clears throat> I don't think enough has been talked about about how I think some of the receivers deserve a, a, a lot of the onus here on some of these because I just think you kind of I I don't want to say like you you are uh, the, the wrong the, the the it's not soft it's not. Um, but but it, it's almost just like you don't you're you're getting like I pushed around. I don't know any other way to phrase it. Like you kind of get run out of bounds, or you just don't fight back, or you let guys get hands on you, and you can't get separation. Um, you, you know, there, there's just been way too much of that. And and I mean, you correct me if I'm wrong. You're watching this stuff too, but I think like that one right there. It's like he just kind of easily just kind of gets shoved out of bounds and then just kind of stopped. Uh, and I, and I, you know, now he made a great play uh, in the end zone. Uh, and I thought he had somebody all over him, but he's already, he's already there. But I think on, on one of those one-on-ones, because see, this is what, th this is what you, I think you thought you would get against these guys uh, because this is their defensive scheme. Every, every scheme is built to try to take away something, but not, a, not any defense out there can like, okay, we can take away everything. It just doesn't exist. And so what they give you is they give you like some opportunities to take one-on-one -on -one shots down the sideline because of the way their scheme is set up. And um, I think you try to take advantage of that, but it's just, but it's not what you're, obviously you're very good at right now. Now you were to Koi Aiken a couple of times. I thought you were to Xavier White uh, one time, but that, that in particular, that was a, that was a tough one. Um, so yeah, you'd like to do something different, I guess, but I just, it's not on Jerron per se, but it's just like you just wish your, I don't know, some of your guys would be a little more physical and, you know, get get off the line of scrimmage, um, you know, just things like that. I just don't know if you've been as physical with, with at that particular position as you as you would have hoped. What's your strain level? I never get to see these uh, measurements, but I know it's a thing. <laughs> and I'm wondering what is the strain level of the wide receivers? My real time thought on that fourth down pass. And I'm on, I'm on the west side, so it's coming to my sideline. And as I'm looking down there, I'm thinking it's just a miscommunication because Bradley seems so out of the play. I thought he thought it was going like the other side of the field or something. Yeah, that's it. It, yeah. it just looked like a total like, well, that's not even what they meant to do type of yeah, thing. I, I agree. You know, so <laughs> and, and again, you you may be you may be right, and maybe I'm looking at it from a like, but it almost looks like he kind of I don't know, shuts down or just gets taken out of the play, but like <laughs> out, out physical or. I don't know. I, I I couldn't. That that's the weird uh, dynamic. But again, I mean, you know, I, I think they would all tell you, Zach included. You got to call a better play there. You got to be in a better position to, you know, to uh, to get two yards in a, in a key spot. And you know, they they didn't they didn't get it done. So it needs to be better for sure.
Yeah, the the thought of how low percentage seemingly to me as someone who is not an offensive coordinator uh, seven days a week, um, the thought of how low percentage that chance is is why I guess I would avoid it like the plague if I was an offensive coordinator seven days a week because the fact that Zach Kittley even mentions, well, I wish Jake would have done this or been more patient and done this. I'm like, well, yeah, we all wish that, <laughs> that yeah. Kate Upton was calling me for lunch or whatever, but he's as green as green gets behind the years, so I don't even know why you would have that thought. It comes back in some ways to me, Chris, regarding something we've talked about before. Are you trying to fit a, a square peg into a round hole? Like you have these grand thoughts of, well, I can run this offense if my quarterback will just be this or if this player will be this, but your players ain't that. And it, I, I grew up with an experience of having a coach who was way too smart for football. For, for some reason, he chose football. I don't know why. But I learned early on, you actually can really outthink the room. And while we got guys – you know, at a 3A high school that are just trying to pass trigonometry or whatever, uh, you're talking about some exotic coverage over here that we, we can't put together. And so now you, we're You took trigonometry in high school? No. I don't know why it's a oh, okay. geometry. Cause that, that, okay, because that is like, woo. That it's is just big, another example <laughs> that's of big how boy simple math. I was, right? I didn't even know what it was called. It wasn't <laughs> trigonometry. It was geometry. I like your Kate Upton. Upton Jones. I like your Kate Upton reference a lot better. But you get what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. I just... I'm like, I know no option seems good there, I guess. Like, hey, do we want to run Taj Brooks into a nine-man box, if that even ever exists? I don't know. Well, no, it doesn't sound great, but do I want to give Jerron Bradley, who hasn't gotten separation all year, and a freshman quarterback a chance to link up 30 yards down the field when we need two? Uh, I also don't like that one. So what do we do, Coach? I don't know. Can we take a halftime break? Have we already taken halftime? <laughs> I, I get, like, the kind of at a loss part of it. Yeah, you 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 want you want them to run the three yard play. That's what you want. Like I I don't, I don't know what what play. that is, but yeah. is there is yeah. there three yard plays that we can run? I, I want to run that one. Yeah, <laughs> or, or and then better yet, you know, like run the touchdown play. You know, it's like, that would have yeah. been even better. Although that would have <laughs> had to have been a fifty five yard play. But yeah, yeah. I, I know the frustration there regarding. I want to do this. I need my guys to execute this. But I just wonder at some point is there. I, it almost feels like you would drop your standard if you said, man, reality smacked me in the face, so now I'm not doing that anymore. So I'm sure it's a battle between the years, you know, for any coach to be like, God, I really want to coach them up to execute these things. But so far, they have not executed these things. So, and that we could have that conversation offensively or defensively, but I hope that makes sense and it wasn't too jumbled up with thoughts of Kate Upton or trigonometry or my geometry teacher in high school. I applaud it. Uh, but this is still players. early in his career, Chris. I think about that as well for Zach Kittley as an offensive coordinator. And I think just like in life for most people, probably you're humbled at some point and you might adjust here or there. Like Tim DeRuiter, I wonder how many ideas he's left by the side of the road, you know, during his career that at one point in time he thought this is going to be great. This is going to work. And then eventually he said, how oh, the hell with that? I'm going to have to figure something else out. And I, I just try to consider all the things that are going into what we see from Zach Kittley. And I think still early on in his career, maybe he's a little more ambitious sometimes than an old, uh, old coach that's long in the tooth might be. <laughs> Does yeah, that make sense at all? Well, it, yeah. And we're wanting Tim to run the, Hey man, stop, run the, stop the QB run play, you know, yeah. like scheme. Yeah. We'll put, put that scheme in, uh, you know, uh, but do we need 15 uh, guys. What do we need? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you know, um, I never know what like you know goes into like how they decide what what play to call or scheme to run on on defense either you know I never know like how, how many cooks are in the kitchen there and how much cuz I th I think you know even Joey was asked uh you know to like do you do you have some say so here and he was like absolutely you know um I I you know I have my fingerprints on this deal but I think when it comes, you know, push comes to shove, like the actual play calls are coming from from Zach, and then obviously the QB has some ability to kind of maneuver around with it. I, I, th these are the these are the stupid, probably, you know, like you, you were like, man, I don't know if that makes sense or not. Th these are some of the other things that I have in my head too. First, today's episode brought to you by prize picks the most exciting way to test your skills and play daily fantasy sports and a great way to add juice to any game anytime and if you've got the game you can turn 10 bucks into 250 with just a few taps easy gameplay 
Quick withdrawals and a giant selection of players, projections, and stat categories are just part of what makes Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. So go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college. That's prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use our code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, right now, Prize Picks is going to match your first deposit up to $100. With the promo code locked on college at prizepicks.com slash locked on college. Daily fantasy sports made easy. These are some of the other things that I have in my head too, uh, rumbling around that are probably dumb thoughts. Like I, I wonder, um, okay, so I I I I think you know, you hear Kansas State talking about man, we're, we're really thin at corner. Um, you know, we, we had these injuries and this and that. Okay. So I, I, I have, I file that away. I file away that, Hey, it's better to have a quarterback just kind of throw one up in a one-on-one situation. I like our chances there as opposed to throwing something where he's got to read it. It, it, it eliminates your chances, uh, or eliminates yeah. b- bad possibilities, I guess. Um, not that that not that that was even perfect because I think he threw one uh, in a you know what I, I think he thought was a one on one situation that safety rolls over there in the corner of the end zone. I yeah. think about I think about Will Hammond and Micah Hudson sitting behind your bench in in, in the uh, in the stands, uh, one of the top rated yeah. quarterbacks in the country and one of the top receivers uh, and top players in the country who are going to show up to throw the ball and to catch the ball. Um, and then I think, okay, is that – are you just trying to show them, hey, dude, we, we, we will throw it and we will – you know, I, I don't know. I, I have no idea. I, all of those things could be false, false, false. But these are all the stupid thoughts, I guess, in my head that I have jumbled up and, and around. I, and, I like the first two a lot better than the third one. Yeah. And I know I, you're just ro- throwing it out yeah, there. The first I'm, two I'm just, you got to consider. Like, dude, yeah. we know this corner <laughs> – you talked about it. It was in your keys to victory, and we mentioned yeah. it. A depleted defense because they had they had a they had one that w- they had a starter. First of all, last year they had a, one of their starters was drafted in the second round. They had another starting corner drafted in the sixth round. So both starting corners from last year drafted. They come into this year. One of those guys has been out. The other guy missed the Oklahoma State game. So at this point, like compared to last year, you're at your fifth and sixth corners. One of those guys did actually play some on Saturday, but even then, you're you're, you're like way down like the the depth yeah. chart with an inexperienced guy. Again, I have no way of knowing exactly who the you know if that was any part of it, but I, I just also know schematically that there's there's certain things that certain defenses will like if you're good enough to attack it. And I think what I hear you saying is you weren't good enough. To it well, sort of. It's just a lower percentage chance, I guess. Yeah, it, it, it is. And I and I thought um, I thought the Koi Aiken plays were also low percentage. And even Xavier even, White, Xavier White is well. saying, "Oh no, oh no, oh yes, yeah." You know, that was that know. kind of play. And, and, and so that's the you know, and is that the problem? Is that you hit on some of those, and so you're like, let, let, "Let's keep going to the well." You know, let's keep you know going. What? Maybe the target was the problem, and I say it. You just mentioned it. The catch he made in the end zone was insane. One of the most contested yeah. catches we've seen all year. Maybe it should have been an Aiken. I don't know. Or an Xavier White. I don't know. Because where do we start this conversation? Wide receiver getting taken out of the play. Yeah. And, and again, I, I don't, I'm not trying to, you know, Brad, Bradley has been a, he was a first team all big 12 guy and all that stuff. But I just, I, I, I can't figure out what happened there. Uh, Cause yeah. it, 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 it looks like it's either miscommunication you you just get washed out or you kind of shut down on that play. It's like I can't I can't get to where I'm trying to go. And then it looks like it's wildly overthrown because but I think the other point is is that run the three yard play. Right. <laughs> I, mean, right. I mean yeah, like like you know, um figure figure out something else. Stop. Why did you but, call one that didn't work? <laughs> well, yeah, that's, Coach, could you tell me why you called a play that failed? Yeah, that's my next question in the next press conference. Okay, before we're out of here, let's take a listen again to Texas Tech offensive coordinator, Zach Kitley, because as the game wore on, it seemed to get a little bit lighter for Taj Brooks as far as touches there. But obviously, as the game wore on and you saw a margin grow, had to wonder, at least I was in the stands, like, oh, how how much are we taking ourselves out of the ground game because of this margin that seems to grow? And obviously, the clock uh, is running out. Let's take a listen to Zach Kitley talking about carries for Taj or something different. 
Taj has got the six most carries in the country. He's six in the in the country in, in rushing yards. Uh, you know, clearly are there times that you look back and you say, hey, maybe we should have gave him the ball here more. Yes, absolutely. But um, again, I don't know if it, what you saw, you know, we, we come out the second half and they go blitz like crazy and they're packing the box. And uh, again, we, we're just not going to uh, just bang our head against the wall. You know, I mean, we, we, did a, we did a solid job running the football all night. But when you take away, if you take away our three big uh, rushes, I can't remember if it was six yards per carry or 5.8 yards per carry. But if you take those three huge ones away that we had, we really were 3.1 yards per carry. So um, again, I'm not trying to, we're not trying to abort the run or anything by any means. And, and you know, I think part of it too is we, Cam got a few more snaps than normal uh, that took some of Taj's uh, options away. You know, I think, I don't know exactly how many carries Cam had, but now he had a few catches in some uh, passing scenarios too. But I mean, definitely, man. I mean, you know, we, we got to get back to Taj at times. And, um, but again, you know, we, we kind of, when we, we knew Baron was going to be out that second half, and Jake was coming in. I and mean, we talked about it in the in the uh, in the locker room as a staff. You know, they're about to probably blitz us. You know, first snaps that that young Jake has played his whole career, and they're going to try to heat us up and play cover one blitz or maybe even some cover zero, and that's what they did. And so we had to be able to try to uh, hit some passes, and, and you know, at times we we tried to run the ball as well, and, and he hit a few here and there, but. And then you know, a little bit later, you know, especially in the fourth quarter, it was kind of those those passing scenarios. Whether it's young Jake or a banged up Baron, as I said yesterday, I, I really don't know that the conversation changes all that much with maybe anticipating how a defense might attack Tech offensively and then maybe what you need to do to help out either quarterback. Yeah, you know, and, and uh, I, I'd be wonder. I, I'm curious if uh, – because I think Taj Brooks is averaging more carries per game than any running back at Texas Tech in the last – uh, it's like I think it's, it's maybe like thirteen to fifteen years or something, because <laughs> um, he's got he's got the six most carries in the country, but he you know everybody's not played the same amount of games. So when you when you just say average carries per game, he's got the ninth most carries of any running back in the country, based on average per game, and he you know again six most rushing yards and all those kinds of things, and yet you still feel like you want to use him more. Uh, at certain times, and again, it, it's based it, it's based on the fact that you're you you feel like there's a way to close out a game, get back in a game, and you're not doing it, and so you you want to go to the best the best thing you've got going. Um, and and I will say uh, there was a point, uh, and I'm trying to remember exactly the timetable on it, but like Zach's not going to say this, Joey's not going to say this, but Tosh took himself out of the game at one point. He just kind of. You know, it's like the hey, you tap the shelf on the helmet because I mean, hey, I need a blow, man. You know, like I need yeah. a, and and you know, and so there, there's times like that whenever the the player and, and every player does it to a certain extent. The only players that really don't are the offensive line and the and the QB where they'll just, just kind of hey, man, get my sub in there, <laughs> give me give me a rest. But uh, that that happened. Um, I just can't remember the exact time that was left on the clock. If it was like eight minutes, nine minutes, ten minutes left in the fourth, or something along those lines. Maybe, maybe it was late in the third. I don't know. It's it, it gets blurry. Um, but anyway, there, there there's things like that too. But yeah, you you, uh, you know, the, the the interception going into the end zone uh, that that Jake threw that he just didn't see the safety rolling over. I mean, yeah, I I I, I don't mind saying it. I, I would have loved for you to just. Even if you hammer it uh, into into uh, a bunch of Kansas State humanity right there, you gain nothing. <laughs> I'm okay with it because I feel like I've got three in my back pocket, you know. But that's also not how a lot of these guys think, and that they're they're not trying to stay in the game or hanging it. They're trying to win it. And when you're in the red zone, you don't know how many opportunities you're going to get. You're trying to hit pay dirt. So there's different, you know. I, but again, this is the conservative nature with my brain thanks and I, I probably need to catch up to the modern times i don't know yeah uh, i don't know chris yeah. i'm not i'm not quite sure uh <laughs> as we sit here three and four right now i think uh, any idea is up for consideration so we've rolled a few things around in the noggin shared them with you today share back with us <laughs> in the youtube comments chris appreciate your time as always man enjoyed it and we'll be back to do it again tomorrow run more touchdown plays run yeah. more qb uh qb game running stop plays and we'll all have a better uh tuesday here man yes that's right. i hope that's what you you see out, out in your future today people if you're watching this <laughs> uh also rush yardage allowed something south of 200 good start so keep that on the list uh as well as we get ready for the cougars of BYU.
you will begin to turn our attention Provo way. Coming up on the other side. Hope to see you then for the next round right back here on Locked On Texas Tech. 